inverse hyperbolic functions. In our previous modules, uh, we discussed and defined what are hyperbolic functions. Of course, we are talking about the complex hyperbolic functions. In this module, we are going to focus on the very natural question that if they are hyperbolic function, what are going to be the inverse of that complex valued hyperbolic function. So, in fact, we are going to focus on arc sine hyperbolic z, arc cosine hyperbolic z and arc tangent hyperbolic z. Let's first uh, focus on arc sine hyperbolic z. So, the, its value is basically equal to log of z plus z square plus 1 square root. Okay. So, as you can see uh, that it is a multi-valued function since this logarithm function is a multi-valued function. Okay. So, uh, due to this reason it is a multi-valued function and similarly uh, arc cosine hyperbolic z is equal to log of z plus z square minus 1 square root. Once again uh, due to this reason that uh, log is involved and due to the reason that uh, square root is involved this function this arc cosine hyperbolic z is a multi-valued function due to two reasons. Okay. And similarly uh, we have arc tan hyperbolic z it is going to be equal to 1 by 2 log of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z. So, uh, there is only one reason, there is only one multi-valued function involved in the definition of arc tan hyperbolic z. So, we can say that it is a multi-valued function and in this case uh, the calculations of uh, uh, the values for which we, are, we will get one branch of this, functions, uh, of this function are relatively simple. Now, uh, let us see uh, why we define arc sine hyperbolic z in this way. Of course, uh, uh, we, we should be able to derive it from the definition of sine hyperbolic z. So, let us see how we can derive this uh, uh, definition of arc sine hyperbolic z from the definition of sine hyperbolic z. So, let us assume that this is equal to uh, w. So, w is equal to arc sine hyperbolic z. Now, this definitely implies since it is the inverse of sin hyperbolic z. So, applying sin hyperbolic z on both sides. So, we should be able to get z is equal to sin hyperbolic w and uh, we know from the definition of uh, sin hyperbolic function that uh, this is equal to e raised to power w minus e raised to power minus w divided by 2. So, from here uh, what is the aim? So, we want to find out the value of w right because this is w and we want to find out the value of w in terms of z. So, find w in terms of z from of course this expression ok. So, uh, let us try to simplify this expression. So, this becomes e raised to power w minus 1 over e raised to power w. So, this implies 2 z e raised to power w is equal to e raised to power w square ok. So, this should be square minus 1. So, this implies what do we get? So, e raised to power w square minus 2 z e raised to power w minus 1 equal to 0. So, this is basically a quadratic ok. So, this is quadratic equation in e raised to power w and if we want to find out the value of w in terms of z. So, we find the value of e raised to power w first using of course, the quadratic formula. So, minus b 2 z plus minus b square 4 z square plus 4 a c oh sorry minus 4 a c. So, it becomes plus 4 divided by 2. So, uh, finding its value and then taking the logarithm on both side we will be able to get the value of w and this is exactly going to be log of z plus z square plus 1 1 by 2 ok. So, over here you can easily see that this 2 and 2 will be cancelled out. So, e raised to power w is equal to z and let me write down z square plus 1 e raised to power 2 ok. So, th there is a plus over here and uh, uh, 2 and 2 will be cancelled out and taking the logarithm on both side we get this expression. So, that is uh, why arc sin hyperbolic z is equal to logarithm of z plus z square plus 1 square root. And similarly, we can prove that arc cosine hyperbolic z is equal to log of z plus z square minus 1 square root. Once again, you can uh, just assume that this is equal to w arc 
cosine hyperbolic z and this implies z is equal to cosine hyperbolic z uh, w so using the definition of cosine hyperbolic w and then uh, following the same step we will be able to prove this thing and moving on to uh, arc tan hyperbolic z uh, this can be once again proved on the same lines okay and of course in this case you can also use the relation between uh, the tangent hyperbolic function and the sine and cosine hyperbolic functions now uh, let's talk about the derivatives of these inverse hyperbolic functions so once again these are multivalued functions so whenever we talk about the derivative of uh, inverse hyperbolic functions it means that we are talking about the derivative of the principal branch of these functions so it is basically uh, we don't have to calculate uh, the values of z which will give us one branch of this inverse trigonometric function we just have to assume that we are doing the calculation on one branch and uh, as we have discussed in our previous module as well that in this case calculation of z is a kind of tedious task that will give us one branch of this inverse hyperbolic function so the derivatives are as you can see on the screen derivative of arc sine hyperbolic z is equal to 1 over 1 plus z square and arc cosine hyperbolic z uh, has the derivative 1 over z square minus 1 and arc tan hyperbolic z is equal to uh, the derivative of this is equal to 1 over 1 minus z square now if you want to calculate uh, the derivative of uh, this function uh, for this once again we adopt the same strategy we assume that uh, w is equal to arc sine hyperbolic z and what do we want to calculate dw by dz so that's what we want to calculate now this implies since it is the inverse of sine hyperbolic z so this becomes so z is equal to uh, sine hyperbolic w and uh, this implies dz by dz is going to be equal to d by dz sine hyperbolic w okay so over here we can use the chain rule so 1 is equal to because dz by dz uh, the rate of change of z with respect to z is 1 so this becomes cosine hyperbolic w okay and uh, d okay so w by dz so this implies dw by dz is going to be equal to 1 over cosine hyperbolic w now we know that cosine hyperbolic square w minus sine hyperbolic square w is equal to 1 now using uh, this uh, property over here we can easily write it down as dw by dz is going to be equal to 1 over okay so taking square root n so basically 1 plus sine hyperbolic square w and we know that what is sine hyperbolic w it is basically z so this is equal to 1 over 1 plus z square so that's why we have the following uh, formula the, the the derivative of arc sine hyperbolic z and similarly uh, we can calculate uh, the derivatives of other uh, arc cosine hyperbolic z arc tan hyperbolic z and we can easily prove uh, these formulas and similarly we can calculate the other uh, derivatives of inverse hyperbolic functions so uh, this is uh, the end of our discussion on uh, uh, trigonometric functions hyperbolic functions their inverses their geometrical properties their derivatives and the calculations involved with these elementary functions